A couple of things. First of all, I'm in a completely new setup. No, I did not. No, I did not redo my room for the 80 billionth time. This is actually a hotel room because I am in California, Los Angeles to be exact, for BeautyCon. I decided that today I'm going to be answering some relationship questions because I'm totally a relationship and boy expert. Uh, kidding, totally kidding. My dad the other day had to beg me to get a boyfriend because he needs someone to hang out with. That's how bad it's getting in the fam with the boyfriend sit. I think I've witnessed enough relationship flips and flops and uh, you know successes to be able to give some insight on the whole shebang. So I have some questions that were submitted on Tumblr um, that I'm about to answer for you guys. So I get ready for this. It's gonna be fun. <laughs> Yeah. Anonymous asks, Katie, I have a problem. So there's this boy I think I like and I'm not sure if he's interested in me. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? We have kind of connected and such at our friends' swim parties and recently went to the beach together with our group of friends. He seems all over me at times and then other times he just ignores me. One of my friends says that I shouldn't go after him so I don't get hurt and another one of my friends says that I should and go after what I want. What should I do? You're my role model. Okay. I feel like with guys, at least like in my experience of being with guys and stuff, there's always this like period of time where it's like hot and cold. Like this guy like shows interest but then kind of backs away and you never know if it's like, oh he's playing hard to get or he's just not interested or he initially was interested and now he's not anymore. Yeah, I think it's great to go after what you want in certain aspects, but in the boy category, I'm a firm believer in the idea that if you are meant to be with someone, you shouldn't have to chase them. It should be something that's so easy and it just like happens and it feels natural and that sort of thing. So in this situation, I would tell this anonymous user to just kind of chill and not obsess over it, kind of focus on other things like school, I guess, or other things that you have to do or want to do, uh, and kind of just like put the boy situation on the back burner and see where things go because I think if you're really meant to be with this person, it will be, and a lot of times I'm like an overthinker and I freak out about stuff and I just kind of need to simmer down a little bit and let things happen. So that's what I would say in this situation. I really don't think that you deserve to be with a person or have to deal with a person that would blow you off like that and just be hot and cold. Like a person that you're supposed to be with should be 100% undeniably in love with you. So. That's just my take on this situation. Hi Katie, so I have a friends with benefits and him and I are really close. He's the first guy my parents allowed me to hang out with and they trust him. Recently I met this new guy but he lives three hours away and he wants to come see me but I don't know what to do. My friends with benefits and I agreed to not do anything with anyone else and I don't know if I should cut ties with him and risk it for this other guy or just be with my friends with benefits and lose the opportunity to be with the guy who seems to actually like me. Okay, this is quite a situation. I have seen plenty of Friends with Benefits movies to know exactly how to handle this. Uh, first and foremost, I have some questions for this person, even though, like, I guess they're one of the questions that don't deserve an answer. Uh, rhetorical, rhetorical, rhetorical question? First and foremost, how does this F W B, that was a struggle. Friends with benefits relationship make you feel? Like, how do you feel in this relationship? Because if it's completely tearing you apart, then I think that that's toxic and you should get away from it ASAP. But if not, then I think it could be perfectly healthy. I don't know. I know a lot of people will disagree with me and say friends with benefits is an absolutely unhealthy relationship sort of thing, but I've actually done it before and I don't think it is. It's really all a matter of if you want something strictly physical or if you want something with emotions. And in the past, Personally, being in a friends of benefits relationship, um, I mean, it didn't like break me down, but it didn't necessarily fulfill me enough. For me, if I'm in a relationship, I need to have like all hands on deck. That's not a good saying. I need like all of it. I need to be all in. I need the guy to be all in. So it really all depends on like how you feel in this relationship first and foremost. But secondly, do you actually have feelings for this friends with benefits person? Because I know it's going to be hard for you to admit and you might not even admit it right away. You might be like, heck no, Katie. Of course I don't, you know? But think about it really truly. Like, if you are really feeling held back from going after this new guy, it might be because you have feelings for the friends with benefits guy. Just, like, think about it that way. That is another thing to consider. I keep, like, spitting during this video. I really hope you can't see it, but I'm, like, really excited about this or something. Uh, anyway, so if none of the things I just said make any sense to you and you're like, okay, Katie, where's the real advice coming from? I think the best thing to do in this situation is just to sit down with this friends with benefits guy and just lay it all down. Not physically, but just, like... You know what I mean. Just talk to him. Talk to him, okay? Use your mouth, use your brain, use your lungs, talk to him. I don't want to say you should ask him for permission, but almost just see what he has to say about it. Um, I think that could be really valuable. It might, you know, kind of complicate things, but at least 
you will have a peace of mind and know that you're not like sneaking behind his back or anything like that. I think that's pretty low and I don't want you to be in that situation because that would really suck. So just be honest. That's really the ultimate golden rule of life. Just be honest. Honesty is the best policy. Anonymous asked, I hooked up with a guy I don't know last Saturday at a party, but we have a lot of mutual friends. So I saw him again last night at the beach and we talked things out. Later that night, I met his best friend and we talked for like six hours and then made out. I stopped it because I felt bad because he was the other guy's best friend and I didn't want to get between them. Now I kind of regret stopping him because he was so amazing, but I think I also have feelings for the other guy. What do I do? Whoo, dear. First of all, I just want you to picture both of these boys like in your mind. Just think of both the boys and think about who you connected with best. It's a really messy thing to get involved with two guys at once and I think that's probably not a good idea for you. So essentially, I think you kind of have to pick one in this situation. Also, if these guys are best friends, that's a really big component to this that you need to consider. Are you willing to get in between a friendship like that? You know, like a really established friendship. Um, this is also a really good situation where you can kind of, you know, step back and see what happens, see who comes to you, that sort of thing. Kind of treading on thin ice right now in this situation because, you know, you really want to connect with one of these guys, but at the same time, you don't want to ruin their friendship that's been fostered over years and years and years, supposedly. So, you know, just kind of get some outside opinions about it and don't like make any crazy moves right now. Like, I think it's a really important thing to kind of just step back and just see what's happening. Sam Shreely asks, describe your perfect man head to toe, inside out, have fun, face. Okay, so I actually had to kind of think about this for a little while. I read this question a couple days ago and had to think about it. I don't know, I see a guy on the street, I'm like, we're gonna get married, like, every day. I fall in love with a new person every day, I'm pretty sure. If I had to have a perfect man, he would definitely be someone with a very creative eye, or at least be able to tolerate my creative eye, because I feel like, you know, it's so easy to talk to someone who understands your creativity and is also creative themselves, and understands, you know, that sort of aspect of life and just being crazy and creative. So whether it's like, art or music or something like that, I think that's really important that my guy has that capability of being creative. So that's a big thing. And then also I just want someone who can make me laugh all the time. Even if they're not necessarily like a comedian, I just want someone that can like be silly with me and make me laugh when I'm stressed out because I get in really stressed out moods or very like antsy perfectionist moods that I need someone to snap me out of it. So it'd be awesome to have a guy who can make me laugh whenever, wherever, however. Also, I really want to be with someone who is just really excited about life and wants to you know take life by the horns and just go with it and have a lot of fun and just do crazy things like traveling a lot I have a really severe condition of wanderlust and I hope that my boyfriend slash husband slash spouse slash partner for life has the same sort of thing where they just want to travel all the time and see the world and really experience things and experience life to the fullest. Kind of sounds like a given, but I want my man to be very devoted to me and that sounds kind of like a given in some situations, but sometimes, you know, guys are kind of like antsy and you don't know whether, you know, they're into you and I want to know like all the time, 100% hands down that my guy is into me and I want him to, you know, show me that like there's no other girl and he has eyes for no one else other than me and that's really special to me. So those are the components of my perfect man. Yeah. Any advice on how to deal with college boys? Just finished off my freshman year as you did and can't seem to figure out how to deal with the heartache of falling for people and them just wanting to be the casual friends with benefits. Okay, this is something that I have toyed with for a very long time, just the idea of college hookup culture. You grow up watching all these movies and TV and read books and, you know, experience your parents' relationships or, you know, maybe not your parents, but other people's relationships where you're like, oh my gosh, love exists, you know, love is a thing. And then you get to college or the end of high school and you're like, darn it, it's not. Or, you know, it's so rare to find people who are like happily in love and not just hooking up. So this has been a very big struggle for me, especially in my freshman year. I don't know if I, I just had really high expectations or something, but I went into it thinking, oh, I'm gonna find my boyfriend on the first day or something like that. Not even really that, but I was just very hopeful about, you know, meeting someone right off the bat, which, you know, needless to say, my dreams were a little bit crushed when, you know, I went to a party and some guy was like, let's Sorry for the profanity, but that is exactly how things are at college and you kind of just need to be like slapped in the face first week and be like, okay, this is how things are, you know? So if you're not prepared, now consider yourself prepared because that's kind of how it is for most situations. Needless to say, you know, with everything I say, take it with a grain of salt because sometimes, you know, there are different situations and you might meet your husband on the first day. Who knows? That would be great. Kudos for you. But for the rest of us, that's not the case. So how do I handle this? How do I handle hookup culture? How do I just like 
deal with it. After being wrapped up in the hookup culture, like the first and second semester of college last year, I'm like looking back at it now and just realizing how ridiculous it was. Something really unfortunate about the whole situation of being in that culture is the fact that I feel like I, I numbed my feelings a lot and I kind of, you know, now uh, have a hard time fostering feelings for people. I feel like, you know, with friendships and with, you know, relationships and potential relationships, I've kind of uh, put up some walls that weren't there before in high school. You know, I've kind of realized that, you know, I could be kissing a boy one night and the next day he wouldn't even say hi to me when we're walking across, you know, the quad together. Um, that's kind of how things were and it really just caused me to put up some walls and put up some barriers and put on my armor when I'm around boys. Speaking with like my sorority sisters and my friends at college, it seems like it's such a universal thing. Like we're all putting up this armor and just having like casual hookups with boys and just turning off our feelings and thinking that's okay. But it's not okay. It's really not. This particular dilemma, this question, I don't quite have an answer for it because I'm in the same problem. I'm experiencing the same problem as you are. You know, just feeling like I'm gonna be inevitably sucked back in when I start sophomore year. You know, it's it's just a really hard thing because you really, as humans, we crave attention, we crave love from people, and you know, if we're not getting love, we're going to take the next best thing, which is attention. And sometimes we're so desperate to feel this attention that we will, you know, lower ourselves and do whatever it takes to get there. And it's just sad, but just know that I'm struggling with the same thing, and so many girls around the world are struggling with the same thing. Really, throughout it, throughout all of that, I just try to remind myself that, you know, I am the pilot of my life. I'm in charge. I, you know, I fly this plane. Not you, not that boy, not that boy, that frat party. Like, no, I am in charge. I am in charge of this body and this life of mine. I don't deserve to just hand it over, you know, like, little, you know, at the samples at the store. You know, you're walking through the mall and they handle the samples. Like, I'm not a sample. I am a life-size, full version, you know, with processing and handling fee. And if you experience a bad night or a bad day with a guy or something like that, a bad situation where you thought it was love and it's just not, just take a deep breath and think about this. You know, it's, it's a bad day, it's a bad experience, but it's not a bad life. I personally, like, would make a mistake and would walk around thinking, oh my gosh, it's printed on my forehead what I did last night. You know, that was something that was really hard for me to kind of take a step back and realize, no, you know, everyone else has their own crap they're dealing with. When it comes down to it, you're the only person that has to deal with what you've done. You're the person who has to live with that and live with the mistakes that you have made. You know, it's it's taken me a while to forgive myself for a lot of the things that I've done this past semester, not even in terms of hookups, but just in general. Like, I've made plenty of mistakes, as everyone has, and it's taken me a while to realize I can forgive myself. I don't need anyone else's approval but my own to forgive myself. That's the only thing, that's the only prerequisite to forgiving yourself is just, you know, your own approval and your own realization that you can move on from this and you can pick up the slack and, you know, change your pace. All right guys, that's it for my video. I'll be sure to see you guys all next Friday. Bye.